run through of the unit one notes for lines and angles. We're going to be using a couple of tools here. Um, one of them is math.new to kind of help show calculations, but also when we want to draw something, we're going to be using this new Desmos geometry tool. So it's uh, Desmos geometry functions, but built on top uh, or built uh, in connection with a lot of the Desmos graphing calculator. Okay, so we have all these things and we want to make drawings of them as we go through. Uh, the first thing is we have some of these labels. We're going to cut and paste these pieces in there. I have this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing, and this thing. So let's start with the last one there where it's just a single letter. So I'm going to, I'll actually just copy and paste that. Whoops, wrong button there. So we will copy that and paste it here. And so the label A here uh, is just a single thing. And when it's just a single thing, we call that a point. And the measure of something like that, we can't, we're not measuring distance or rotation or area or volume. It's just a location, like wherever it is. And a picture of what that would look like, well, I'm going to draw a point here on this graph. Then I'm going to use the arrow to click on that point and three dots and label it. And the default is it just kind of labels it alphabetically. So that gives me point A, which is perfect. That's, that's really what I wanted. Now uh, I just need a picture of that. So I'm going to take a quick snapshot of this piece here. I'm gonna make sure it's going to my clipboard so I can paste it. There's point A. Awesome. Now let's do another one. Let's, let's do uh, this one that's got A, B, but it has arrows going in both directions. So I'm going to copy and paste that into the next one. That is going to be a line. A line means it's like a connection between the two points, but it just goes on and on all the way to one direction and on and on all the way into the other direction. So if I were to look at this menu under the line tool and I were to find not segment but line, I could find that one. And notice that I have an A in this other point, so I need to label that second point. I'll click on the second point and uh, check mark the label box. Now I can again take a screenshot of this picture and I have an A, B line, uh, but it goes past the A and it goes past the B, and that's how we describe it as a line. It's not contained between the A and B, it just kind of goes past them. So now I'm going to capture that and paste it into my picture here. Awesome. And now let's kind of start over. So I'm going to um, just click the back arrow and go back to just my single point A because I want to do the next one is either this one arrow side or the contained side. Let's, let's try the one arrow side. So I will copy and paste that down for the next thing. And that is what we call a ray. A ray kind of goes off into one direction, but it is stopped in the other direction. So a ray, when I look at this menu here, uh, is the third one down. And so now I can click on A and then go from there, meaning that it's stopped at A, but it goes through the other one, which happens to be B. I'll click on that point, three dots, label it, and now it's Ray AB. So let's take a screenshot of that one. It's nice that my screenshot's in the same area, so I don't have to resize it. Awesome. All right. And a line doesn't really have a distance uh, in here. So there's no real measure that we can use for a line because it doesn't stop. So um, you could say instead, I'm going to add an extra thing here, it uh, does not stop or another way to, to describe that is like it's infinite. Um, but you could say, I guess you could describe it as a little bit of a location and that's fine. So we have 
a line is infinite. Oh, there we go. Just have to scroll down to see it. An array is infinite. It's not contained in any certain way. All right, now let's look at the, the ones that we use the most all the time everywhere in geometry. So this first one is a what we call a segment. And a segment is when your oops. Let's undo that. We'll just undo the B there. A segment is when it stops on both sides. So it's just that distance in between the two things. So I'm going to go over here and this one's going to be um, half of what we're looking at today. So a segment a, B, uh, like this, A, B. We'll make sure that the other one gets labeled as B. Three dots and then label. So that's segment A, B there. The thing about it, though, is what if I were to say it the backwards way and call it segment B, A? And I'd like to ask myself, is that any different? Well, if I'm just looking at it backwards, but the line segment is still the same, then it's the same thing. So I could have said AB, I could have said BA. Both of them would be the same thing either way, and that's a segment. And that is often uh, looking at a measure of distance, because we can measure the distance between those two things. All right. And then the last one is going to be this angle. Now the angle description can be shown in a lot of different ways. We're going to see some ways where it's done with three letters, some ways it's done with one letter, some days ways it's done with a number. Um, but the most common uh, that you would see like in textbooks or looking things up online is a, a three letter type of description for an angle. Now for something to be a three letter angle, that means that we have a B in the middle and then A and C are going off on either side. Well, to create that, I need to create another segment here. And since B is in the middle, I'm gonna, and I'm already going off to A, I need to go off in another direction, kind of like that. So now I have B in the middle, A off in one direction, and then we'll label this third point, and it'll uh, default to the next letter, which is C. So this is angle A, B, C, because B is in the middle, so B is in the middle here. We call this middle point the vertex. If there were more multiple of them, uh, you would say a bunch of vertices. But the vertex is kind of that connection point where all the different segments come together to create the angle right there. So I'm going to take a picture of that. That's my angle. And then we're going to see something else that goes along with it here in just a moment. So I'll paste that in. Let's make it a little bit smaller so it kind of keeps up on the same page. A lot of these we don't need to be quite as tall. There we go. Okay, an angle, which is what we're calling this, uh, is a measure of rotation because if I look at this angle looking tool, and I click the three points in order, A, B, C. Notice that it says 68.5 degrees. So as I try and rotate, that number changes. But um, if I were to say like that's 60 degrees, let's, let's look at something here just for a moment. We're going to make this a little bit bigger, turn on a grid so we can line up some of these with the exact points on the grid. So let's say I did this here. I'll kind of line these up exactly on this box. And that gives me pretty close to 45 degrees. Awesome. So I'm at 45 degrees. So then my question is, is this angle any different than this one? And no, it's still 45 degrees because it's spinning 45 even though one leg is longer. Similarly, this angle here, uh, it's still 45 degrees. All three of those angles are the same angle because they're still ABC, they're still 45 degrees. It doesn't matter that the segments um, are long or short. What matters is how much rotation, how much spin 
is happening to get from one segment to the other, and it spins 45 degrees. So this one is a measure of rotation. Okay, now let's take a look at this picture, and uh, this is actually going to be something I want you to add to your notes um, based on uh, an activity we do in class. But the idea is, what segments do you think you could create? Well, I could connect A and B, and now I have segment AB. Is there any other kind of things? Well, I could have line AB. Could I have ray AB? Yeah, I could. Could I have angle AB? No. Could I have angle ABC? Sure. It's going to be a straight angle because it's like going off this way, going off to the right, and that's a 180 degree rotation to get all the way around facing in the opposite direction. But um, so that's a bunch there. Now let's think about well, what other kind of segments? I have AB. What about AC? AC is another one. And then AD. So it's like I could connect A to anything else in here. AI, AH, AG, AF. And the task that we're going to be looking at in class is how big is this box going to be? How many different segments could I create? Now here's something that I, I think is interesting. If I have line AB, I'm going to kind of recreate this over here. If I have line AB, so I'm going to click on line, and I'm going to make line AB. So here's line AB. And how do I know it's line AB? Well, if I highlight these, I can hold the shift button and highlight lots of things. And I can label them. So that's line AB. If I add a point C kind of over here, let's label it. Notice that line AB and line AC are all the same. Like it doesn't matter. Like if, if I move this around, it's still going to be that same line. So that line isn't any different than its original because they overlap each other. So I couldn't put AC. I'd have to go to something that doesn't overlap, like AD. And then I could go to AI, because that's still not overlapping, AH, and AG. But if I do AG, I cannot do AF, because those would be overlapping. I'd have the short one and the long one, but it's a line. There's no measure of distance. It's more like a measure of direction. So in fact, I might change that over here. Does this have direction? No, it doesn't. But it's kind of like just a measure of direction. Let's change that. We'll change this to direction. So that one is direction. And array is also a direction. Um, yeah, there we go. All right, now we're going to get into like the calculation piece of it. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, AB as a line and AC as a line overlap. But it's the same thing with the ray, because if I'm starting at A, uh, I can't really do AC, because those would overlap. But I could do BA, because starting at B and going through A is a little bit different. Let's take a look at that. So I'm going to look at my picture over here. And a ray, if I were to have this ray going that direction, and I'm going to label those points. I'll hold down Shift. I can highlight and then label my points. And now I'm going to look at a ray, and I'm going to go the opposite direction. You might be saying, those look the same. Well, I'm going to try and style this one a little bit different. That one's colored red. And if I were to look at my two lines here, I can drag them down from this top corner into these expression lists. And if I turn this off, those are not the same line. They overlap for a little bit here in the middle, but the red ray goes off to the left, and the right ray goes off to the right. So the order matters. If you go forwards or backwards with the ray, those are two different things. All right, now we're in the second half of the video here, 
And all of these things are going to be about this kind of phrase here, this, this equation, where you have one part plus the second part. It's going to be equal to the whole thing. This first question is probably the most common type of setup. So um, let's take a look at that. So when I go into this picture, it says J is, be is between K and I. So J is in the middle. So I'm going to click on Edit, and I'm going to put J in the middle. And it says K and I. So K and I, like that. Perfect. It says KJ is X plus 7. And JI is 2. So that means the x plus 7 is here, and the ji is this part here. And then the 4x minus 3, where does that go? Well, 4x minus 3 is ki, so all the way from k to i. So I'm going to put that one on the bottom, showing that it kind of goes across the whole thing. So now I notice that these two smaller segments put together are the same as the long segment. So another way of thinking of that is I have one thing plus another thing equals the total. So this is the kind of thing that we're going to have over and over and over again. And so I need to figure out what are the two smaller ones and what's the total. Well the two smaller ones happen to be x plus 7 and 2. And then we have for the full thing that that is 4x minus 3. Awesome. So now I have x plus 9, 4x minus 3. And as I can start um, doing some things to these equations, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. That gives me 4x on the right and x plus 12 on the left. Now I'm going to subtract x from both sides. I'll move this, these x's next to each other so they can combine and make a 0. And now I can also combine the, the 4x minus x gives me 3x. Then I just need to get rid of that coefficient, the number multiplied by x, divide by 3 on both sides. And that will give me x equals 4. So a lot of steps going on there, um, but uh, they work pretty, pretty neatly. So let's take a picture of this as our work. In fact, I'm going to do it in kind of a couple of stages here. So I'm going to take this picture and go back to my work. I'll paste it in. I'm going to shrink it down so it takes up like half the screen. And then I'm going to do the second half down here. That way I can fit it in that wide box. There we go. So this kind of continues on a little bit further. All right, now for this one, uh, we have a handful of things going on. When I look at this picture, I have 24 for this EG, and I have 12 for this middle, and then I have 14 for this. So I'm going to fix this so it'll be better for you all, but instead of having it this way, we're going to have this in here as a drawing. That way you can edit it. This will already be set up, so you can just click Edit. But now I look at this and I can say, all right, I know that if it's 24 from E to G and F to G is 12, that means that from E to F is also 12. So I'll put a 12 there. And I got 12, 12. And then I'm looking at this F, H part here. And from F to H is 14, but from F to G is 12. So that means this piece here is going to be 12 plus something equals 14. So I'm going to add a text box here. And we'll say that that is 2, because 12 plus 2 equals 14. So I've, I've kind of put all the pieces together on my drawing. And I could just add some things together, because it says find EH. EH is the full distance. So that's 12 plus 12 plus 2. 
So I'll just, as a calculation, I'll just make sure that I get that correct here without any, any errors. So I have 12 plus 12 plus 2, and that winds up being 26. Take a screenshot of this little piece here. That's me just showing my work. This can be kind of done as mental math, but it doesn't have to be. All right, now this last one, we'll move a little bit quicker with it because we're going to do it um, a lot like the first one. So in fact, I'm going to go back to this line where I have my three boxes and I'll just fill them in. I have two smaller pieces and they total up to the long piece. So I have one small piece that's x minus 1 from D to E. Then from E to F is the other small piece. And that is 8. And 3x minus 7 is the total. So we'll do 3x minus 7. Now I just need to get the x by itself and solve this equation. And then I need to figure out how that's going to calculate or measure the other, the full segments using that number for x. I immediately notice I can combine negative 1 and 8. Now I have a plus 7 and a minus 7. I'm going to add 7 to both sides to make a 0 on the right. And that gives me x plus 14 on the left. Then I'm going to um, add a negative x to the left side, and that'll let me make a 0 over here. I have 14 equals negative x plus 3x. And the last thing, I just need to divide by 2. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I get 7 equals x. So I'm going to take two pictures of this again to, to kind of fit into the white box. So I'll do a screenshot, take a picture of this, fit it in here, shrink it down to size, and then I'll do the second half where it tells me that 7 equals x. Now that's not done. That's not done. So again, <coughs> this will be available to you so that you can edit these things as a drawing. because on this one, it's not. So let's cut that. I'll insert a drawing. This will already be a drawing for you so that you don't have to do it this way. And uh, since I know that 7 equals x, that means that this piece right here is 7 minus 1 from d to e, and that this piece down here is uh, 3 times 7 minus 1. Well, 7 minus 1 is just equal to 6. And 3 times 7 minus 1 is the same as 21 minus 1. And 21 minus 1 is 20. So from D to F, which is what it's asking us to find, is 20. So now I have all my work. Some of it's in the picture. Some of it's in the solving the equations. But it's got a lot of things going together there. All right, now let's look at these as well. These are going to be uh, drawings for you to edit. I'm just fixing them because this is my first round with it. All right, so it has some measures for the angles. This one's pretty straightforward, but let's take a look at it. We have um, ABD is 45. So ABD is this corner here from A to B in the middle over to D. So this side is 45. And that's a rotation between those two segments. And it says find ABC. It says that DBC, that happens to be the other side over here is 100. So sometimes you're going to see it as the two smaller things are given, and then you add them together to get the whole thing. Other times you might see that you get the total and one of the pieces, and you'd have to do a subtraction. In this case, it's just a straightforward addition. 
So I'm going to have 100 plus 45. And then just to simplify that, that's 145. Screenshot that. Very easy. The hard part was trying to put the, the measures in the right places. Awesome. Now this next one, we are going to see that we have some equations to set up. So let's first start putting the equations in the right places. So we have 22x minus 5. Let's see where that goes. We have um, 67 and 10x. So I'm also going to set up this drawing where it has those things already in there for you. I'm just duplicating the drawing and then, whoops. We'll just crop it down to those things. So we have a 67 degrees and we have a 22x minus 5 and then we have a 10x. We'll put these each kind of like in a, a little box. So the 10x, the 22x minus 5, and this so that you know, hey, these are all something that I can put somewhere. So I'm going to drag the 10x to wherever it says KBA. So B is in the middle, the vertex, and KBA is there. So that's 10x. And the 67 is the CBK. So that's that side. And then the 22x minus 5 is the total. So those two pieces are going to add up to 22x minus 5. So again, I just have this addition postulate is what it's called. It's like an addition equation. The idea that two smaller parts can add up to a total. So I have here one of the parts is 10x. And the other part is uh, 67. And then the third part is 22x minus 5. Now again, I'm just solving an equation. So in here, I see that I got coefficients, I got constants, I got lots of things. So I'm going to first add 5 to both sides. That will make a 0 with this 5, and it will make 72 with the other side. Then I'm going to add a negative 10x to the left side which I also, it also adds it to the right side. But that makes a 0 over here. And this will become 12x. And finally, I can divide both sides by 12 to get x all by itself, solving that equation there. And I get x equals 6, right? So it wants us to find the measure of KBA. Now, KBA is 10x. So KBA is going to be 10 times x. And in this case, x happens to be 6. So that's 60. So there, we found it. 10 times 6 is 60. So now I have some work in the picture, and I have some work in this solving equation here as well. Let's take a picture of my work from solving the equation. So we'll kind of do it in two halves again. So here's like this half. Da, 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 da. Capture that. Paste it in, but make it small so I can do it side by side. Capture the second half. All right, there we go. So now I have the solved equation, and I figured out that KBA was 60. Let's look at some of these next things here. These are some more angles, but in some specific relationships with angles. So this first one, I noticed that I have two angles, and they make a perpendicular corner. And when you make a perpendicular corner, uh, that means that you're going to be making 90 degrees. 
So I'll make this a drawing, but that we don't have to necessarily do a lot of drawing on this picture. It's mostly solving the equation. And in this one, uh, if it doesn't say find the measure of a certain angle, then you're solving for x. So I'm going to go back to this line where I have two things add up to a total. You might only see two things. Like I see the 2x plus 1, and I see the 31. But the total is kind of implied by it being a quarter circle here. And that quarter circle that's marked by a square corner is 90 degrees. Now I can say that I can combine some things. I got 2x plus 32 equals 90. I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides to make a 0. And on the right side, it'll make 58. Then I can divide by 2. And I wind up getting that x equals 29. And there is all of my work. I'm going to go ahead and capture that as one shot. And I'll just shrink it down so it fits in there nice and neat. Perfect. Paste it in. Shrink it down, make it the same size as the picture, and we figure out that x equals 29. Now the second one, similar but very so slightly different. The first one makes a quarter circle, which is marked by a square. The next one makes a half circle, which we can understand because it's a straight line all the way across, and this makes a half circle. Well, a quarter circle is 90 degrees, but a half circle is 180. So I'm going to take my two pieces. I have one of the small pieces is 2x. The other small piece is 46. And the uh, total to make the straight line is 180 degrees. All right, so now, again, I'm just solving my equation. I'm going to get that x by itself. First, I subtract 46 from both sides. And that gives me 2 times something equals 134. I'll divide by 2 on both sides. And that will give me x equals 67. And that's what we're going to mark for our answer, x equals 67. We'll shrink it down after pasting it in. So it's kind of the same size here. And I have one last one. This one's a little bit different, a little bit different. I'm going to delete a couple of these things. Uh, notice that I have one side and the other side, and they're not kind of adding together, but they do have the vertical angle relationship. That means they're across from an intersection created by the same pair of lines. When you have that, that just means that they're equal to each other. So 5 times x plus 3 is equal to 48. Let's bring this in a little bit closer. I can click on transform now and let's start doing some solving equations. I'll subtract 3 from both sides to make a 0 with that 3. And then I will divide by 5 on both sides. And that gives me x equals 9. That was a very short kind of solving equation there, but it worked out nice and neat. capture that and put it in here. Perfect. That is the end of these notes and remember um, to try and refer back to these whenever you're getting confused on how to set up various types of equations. All right, thank you.